Today, I'm going to show you one of my favorite holiday recipes that I have been making for several years now. This recipe comes out of Sweden and it is traditionally eaten on the 13th of December, St. Lucia Day, which is a day of a celebration of light. Given that we are in winter, at least in the northern hemisphere, this is the time to kind of have a celebration for the um, the light that will eventually come out of this darkness. So the name of uh, what I'm going to be making today is called saffron buns, or in Swedish it goes by the name Lusikater, which kind of roughly translates into fluffy cats. And the one of the main ingredients in these buns the saffron. So what I'm going to do first is essentially prepare the saffron. And what I mean by prepare the saffron is two things. So I'm going to take um, a quarter of a teaspoon of saffron. And then to this, we're going to add a little splash of whiskey or cognac. Use whatever you have uh, available to you. So I'm going to be using cognac for this recipe. Um, and I'm going to just give it a little splash. And this will you know, just have the saffron essentially just um, you know, sitting in this little ramekin. And we'll see uh, after about five minutes, 10 minutes, this liquid will become a lot more of a golden hue because all the, the color from the, the saffron is going to seep out into the alcohol. And then that will help dye the buns and the buns will be like this nice golden color. Saffron can be quite expensive. Today at the grocery store, I picked up this small jar. Um, it was about $14, $15. And inside this jar, this is how it came, is uh, there's a little black bag that has the saffron inside of it. And, you know, it's not all, you know, it's not like it's, it's um, a full bag. You know, probably if I were to measure this out, it would probably be, you know, near a tablespoon and not more. So it is quite expensive. That's because of the labor that goes into collecting the saffron. Essentially, these are the, the stamens of crocuses. So they are hand picked um, out of flowers. And so it's quite time and labor intensive. So that's why the price is um, quite high. But you know, sometimes if you're traveling, you can find it for a lot cheaper. So I remember one time being in Spain and seeing it for a lot less than what um, you typically see it here in America. So just keep that in mind. In this recipe, you don't need that much. I'm just using a quarter of a, of a teaspoon. So, you know, you might have a friend um, who has a little that they can share if you don't want to buy um, a lot. But you know, saffron can really be a great ingredient to incorporate um, in many dishes. Sometimes I'll take a little pinch and put it into rice um, in the rice cooker. And that's a really great way to just color the rice and add this kind of unique flavor. It's really great in curries as well. If you have a coconut base, you can put it in that as well. Okay, so while the saffron is sitting in the cognac, we're going to start with the pepper preparation of the buns. And what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, some butter. So this is about three ounces. It's about like uh, three fourths of a stick of butter. And then I want to take, um, I'm going to take a cup of milk 
and put that in a pot and get it all um, together, melt it together. Luckily, besides the saffron, this recipe doesn't have too many like complicated uh, ingredients. I'm gonna just turn this on and I'm gonna let the butter melt and, and let everything mix together. Okay, so the butter has melted into um, the milk. We don't want it to boil, so I'm gonna shut it off. And so, um, you know, the beginning stages of this recipe, there's a lots of little things that will all come together. So what I'm going to do now is um, in another small bowl, I have all these small bowls, we're going to measure one teaspoon of yeast. And then um, we're going to just put in a little bit of this warm liquid just to let the yeast activate. So probably the equivalent of like a tablespoon or so. And typically what will happen is that this will kind of form maybe like a little pasty, um, but it's fine. We're gonna set that aside. Okay. So now, let's get another bowl. And in this bowl, what I'm going to do is get an egg. one egg in our bowl and then we're going to add um, a fourth of a cup of sugar half of a teaspoon salt, and then um, I'm going to add the, the saffron mixture. I want you, before I do that, just to take a look at the saffron mixture. You can see that it really has, um, the, the redness of the saffron has really leached out into the cognac and so it's a really vibrant um, color and this is going to you know really help make the the buns um, just a beautiful uh, golden shade so we're going to put that um, in here as well i want to make sure to just get all the liquid because saffron's expensive and i don't want to waste any of it so i'm gonna <laughs> Scrape as much as I can out of this. And then mix this together. Okay. 
Once that's all mixed together, we're going to take the um, butter and milk mixture and also put this in the bowl. Gonna wait on the the yeast still, um, but we can add the flour, and so we need a little more than three cups of flour. So let me rotate this. This should be enough. At least I hope so. So let's add three cups of, I'm using all-purpose flour here. Yeah, just enough. Okay, so what you're looking to see, um, let me see if this can work. Um, you wanna see like little bubbles forming. And so I'm starting to see the, the presence of just like small little bubbles. Um, you know, it's not overwhelming, but there are little bubbles that are popping up um, in this mixture. And that's, that's the sign that like the yeast is activating. And um, so I'm going to add that now to the mixture. That's why why I wanted to wait, um, because I, I saw just, um, you know, maybe one bubble, but I wanted to give it a few more minutes for it to, to activate. Now we're going to just mix this all together. I have to set it down to just mix it as well as I want to. So it's almost there. All right, so look at this dough. It's like that nice, it's already quite golden, you can see. And, um, you know, this is going to just be really enhanced once it's cooked. Or baked, I should say, if I'm going to use the right words. Um, so, on to page two. Okay. 
so now I'm going to uh, spend some time kneading this, um, this dough, and then we're going to put it aside for a little bit for, for the yeast to really activate and for to expand. Okay, so once you knead the dough, what you're going to do is you're going to put it back, I'm going to put it back in this bowl and put a tea towel over it and let it sit for about an hour and um, you should see that it increases in size. Hopefully it doubles in size, but uh, we're going to wait for an hour and see what happens. <clears throat> So now that the dough has um, been resting and proven for about an hour, we're now going to make our, our loose cutter. And I just want to show you this page from the book of all these different traditional shapes that people typically will make for this um, saffron bun. So I'm going to try to just make a variety of these but the most traditional one is this like s shape here that's called the yule mat the christmas pig um and then you know sometimes you'll you'll see some of these other ones like um preston tar the the priest of pear and then um linda barnett the the little child so there's all these different varieties that, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a fun thing if you do like playing with dough and just taking, um, you know, just seeing what shapes you can make. Um, it is quite a, a fun little exercise. So I'm going to just take a, a little bit of the dough and just roll it out. And sometimes um, I'm going to first split it in half and then just do this kind of like braiding uh, pattern. And this dough typically is decorated with currants. So, you know, you, you'll see um, currants kind of smattered in different um sectors of the the buns and so forth so i always put like maybe two or three currants in each of the buns and be done with it I will be the first to admit that I am the, I have a very um, hard time with mm, mapping my creations uh, with, with their uh, depictions on uh, the page sometimes. So, you know what, I do my best approximation and I think that's good enough. Um, it's all going to the same place. So just keep that in mind. Let's make it like this. So depending on the type of person you are, you can certainly, um, you know, just find solace in making all these different types of shapes 
and um, inventing new shapes and seeing what you make. Here we have this traditional Christmas pig shape. Um, so it, it just looks like an S. But um, yeah, I hope that you find this kind of inspiring that you can do whatever you want. You don't have to stick to, the, to these shapes in particular if you're, you know, wanting to experiment. Certainly, by all means, if you want to do something more complicated, you can certainly do that as well. All right, I'm going to speed this up and do um, all of these buns. Okay, so now that I have all of my uh, buns in the, the shapes that I want to bake them in, um, I'm, I have the oven preheated at... 400 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 200 Celsius. And before I put them in the oven, I'm going to apply an egg wash on these buns. Um, this will make them even more of a golden hue. You know, these buns are, and for St. Lucia Day, which is a celebration of light. And so the buns themselves are kind of this emblem of, of light. They're going to be just a nice golden color. And, um, you know, that's what we So now I'm going to put these in the oven. Um, I'm going to put them in for about 12 to 15 minutes. Check them around minute 10 to just see how they're doing. Um, but I think, you know, we shouldn't need more than 15 minutes for these. Okay, so let's check out how these buns are turning out. So here we can see the buns, they have this nice, um, you know, golden egg wash on top of them. And uh, yeah, they look great. And so these buns can be served in a variety of ways. They're great, you know, by themselves. Um, if you want to put some jam on them or clotted cream, that's also good. Um, I like to also make eggs like soft boiled eggs and dip the buns that way um pair them with cheese with meats whatever they're quite flexible so i would really love to know um you know if you end up trying this what you think about this recipe and as always i really love when you guys send me comments um you know give me encouragement to continue doing these videos and when you share these videos with your friends and family <clears throat> and if you haven't done so already make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can be notified whenever i uh, upload new videos and recipes 
and make sure to follow me on my other social media pages such as instagram um just because i have other content that i'm making on those pages as well so i hope you all have a great day i hope that you have learned something and um you know enjoy this winter time um and the food that's it is associated with